rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. You all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for the two New York City police officers, Jason Rivera and Wilbert Morrow, who were tragically killed in the line of duty this past week. I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Just want to welcome everybody once again. We are going to move right into public comment on agenda items only. So I know we have a lot of people on this meeting. So anybody would wish to speak on any agenda items, just please is a, a button at the bottom that gives you the reaction. So if you wanna put up your hand or something like that and just let me know. Okay, does anybody wish to speak on the agenda items only? I would like. Okay, Zeb, Zeb, go right ahead. There you go. Uh, good evening, uh, esteemed board members. My name is uh, Wiesenfeld, chairman of the UJC of Woodbury. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to discuss the moratorium law that's on the agenda for tonight and the direction of the village in general. We've had discussions with members of this village board about all the actions that have been undertaken by the village during last year all for seemingly legitimate reasons and explanations were given to each action. But unfortunately, the general perception in the community is not so. They do not feel that the village is working in their best interest and it's incumbent on the board to work hard to dispel these perceptions and starting by not extending the moratorium. Legitimate concerns were raised on the original moratorium if the sole purpose for this moratorium is a shortage in water supply. And why would the proposed moratorium include such areas or houses that would not have affected the presumably limited water supply? For instance, people with their own well or areas that draw water from different sources than from the village supply. We implored board members at the time to carve out those exceptions, but it was ignored. We do not dispute the need for more water supply and resources, and we applaud the village board members for looking to the future and doing what's necessary for the future growth of the village. At the time when this blanket moratorium was passed, we did not object in public. We were told that this will only last for six months and will not be extended. We were told that it's an easy fix. We only need to dig for one well, which is already in process. Now we're being told that this must be extended and we have no assurance that it won't be extended another time. On behalf of the community at large, we voice our firm objection to this moratorium, and we hope that if this board does decide to move forward with the extension, that you will at least include enough exemptions so it does not affect any existing residents in any way, and assurances that this won't be extended any further. We thank you for your service and your time. Good evening. Thank you, Zeb. Uh, do I have any other comments from the public? Yeah, you have a hand up over here, Andrew. Yes. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor. It's Attorney Nicholas Ward Willis with Keenan Beam. We had submitted a letter to the board this afternoon. I don't know if everyone had a chance to review and receive it. So I'll just summarize it so as not to repeat what's in the letter. Our firm represents Woodbury Chicken, which is proposing a Popeye's restaurant at the existing Pizzeria Uno in the uh, Woodbury Center Business Park. We take no position with respect to the need for a mor moratorium. We leave that to your discretion and we recognize you're doing what you believe to be in the best of the village. We expressed a concern, however, that the moratorium has no exceptions and is overly broad in its scope, especially as applied to our property. And as we detail in our letter, our property has received a will serve letter from the village of Harriman. Additionally, we received, we will be generating and using less water than the predecessor. So we request that if you're going to extend the moratorium in your discretion, that a resolution include exceptions for situations like ours where it's an in-kind replacement use that is using the same as or less water than the existing use that obviously doesn't draw down more water or impact the 
um, water concerns that the village board has. The other exception would be that if we're receiving water from a separate water supplier like the village of Harriman, there should be an exception for that. We don't think that harms the intent of a purpose which the board is exploring with the uh, moratorium that is present for you. So we would request that you discuss and consider what I think are two reasonable exceptions that the board could adopt and include in this resolution if it were so inclined. And we think it's legally justified. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Nicholas. We did receive your letter. Uh, do, Desiree, do I need to acknowledge receipt of that letter at any point? I only just received it tonight. I, I know you guys received it earlier through Kelly, I believe. Yep. Right. No, you don't need to acknowledge receipt. It's received. Okay. okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else with any comments from the public? Hi, Joe Haspel. I am also an attorney. I represent Woodbury Center. I also supplied a letter back on January 18th, 2022. And I uh, asked if that letter be made part of the record and if it was disseminated to the board members. If it was, I will just uh, leave it to the letter. If it was not, I'll read the letter into the record. No, we, we have, we, I acknowledge receipt of that letter as well. The board okay. received that. Thank you, then there's no reason to waste everybody's time. <laughs> and we appreciate that. Uh, anyone else from the public who wishes to speak? All right, one final call. Anyone else wishes to speak on agenda items only? Okay, hearing no others, I'll move along to administrative business. I am looking for a motion and a second to accept receipt of the minutes uh, of the meeting held January 13th. I'll make the motion. CJ Graziano with the motion. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, Trustee Ferrelli with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Approval of abstract. Um, I need a motion and a second to approve abstract 15 containing vouchers 211362 to 211468 and totaling $522,000. Five, oh no, five, two, two, five, nine, five, and 74 cents. <laughs> oh Do I have a motion? Jesus, uh, Trustee Gomez with the motion. I'm second. And Trustee Burek with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so be it. So carried. Looking for a motion in a second to approve fire department equipment request. Uh, 2022. 02, totaling approximately $322.59 for the purchase of first aid kit supplies. I have I'll make a motion. Trustee Burek with the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Trustee Ferrelli with the second. All in favor, please? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So be it. So carried. Okay. Moving right along. All right, now we move into old business. So a discussion and update on the moratorium on building local law nine of 2021. So this local law was, was approved on July 22nd of 2021, which put in place a moratorium uh, due to really what has been a, a lack of water production from the wells that we currently have in place. So uh, at this time, I will refer to our engineer, Natalie Barbara from H2M, to just present us with what your findings have been to date. Sure, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I guess I'll just start with sort of discussing what's occurred in the last year to sort of improve the village's supply capability. Um, as you know, the water department has been involved with the rehabilitation of certain wells uh, which has increased uh, certain supply, although um, additional supply is needed. Uh, we've also been involved with developing a well along Troutbrook Road. Uh, the village faced some challenges associated with the development of that well uh, due to weather, as well as material deliveries and procurement. Um, at one point upon development of the well, uh, the yield was approximately 150 GPM and in consultation with the water department and uh, the village's hydrogeologist, 
uh, they opted to uh, pursue additional development, which increased the yield to 257 GPM, which was uh, a big success. Um, you've received if anybody's a report. Got their, one, one second, Natalie. If you've got your, please, please put your uh, audio to mute for us. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Natalie. Uh, you've received a report from your hydrogeologist that was delivered in uh, November of last year. Uh, that report demonstrates that the uh, new well has water quality that meets all drinking water standards. And again, uh, the testing uh, shows a stabilized yield of 257 GPM. Uh, the next steps for putting this well online are uh, permitting. The applications are intended to be submitted to uh, the Department of Health and the DEC this month. Uh, thereafter, typically after submission, there's a waiting period for a response from regulatory agencies. Uh, there will be a second submission likely to address their comments. Um, and thereafter that submission upon approval from those agencies, uh, the next steps are bidding and construction. So um, the other uh, step that the village has taken over the course of the past year was um, engaging a hydrogeologist to investigate additional locations for other well supplies. Um, you've also received that report. We agree with the findings of the hydrogeologist and um, you know, we're happy to discuss those if you would like us to. You can, you can go into that, Natalie, sure. please. Um, so the report ranked uh, three sites based on uh, surficial geology or underlying geology and um, you know, known results from past testing in, in the village. Uh, the sites that have the hydrogeologist has ranked <laughs> is along Troutbrook Road and uh, Mineral Springs. Um, we agree with those recommendations. So again, that report uh, identified those locations and also provided estimates for the village to consider authorizing that work. Um, so essentially the work for the hydrogeologist and another well driller will consist of drilling three test wells as well as the development of another well um, upon the findings of the test wells being successful. And um, so I'm in the process of preparing a, a memo for the village board to consider our the next steps for additional well supplies um, and also uh, the estimates associated with that. So. If the village would like, we could also reach out to the hydrogeologist for a proposal to um, perform those exploratory studies so that you can consider at a future meeting. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want me to touch on at this time or? No, I think, I think that's it. I'm gonna go out to the board members now for board member comment on this, uh, starting with the resident water expert, CJ, Trustee Graziano. All right, thank you, Natalie. Um, <clears throat> I too, you know, I've read the reports and agree with that assessment. Um, there's a thing that the public needs to understand is in any water supply situation, there, there's steps you need to take in order to be able to put water supply into actual supply. And it's not just an overnight thing, you know, being one of the, the only utility that exists that people put into their body, there's a whole bunch of safeguards that are put in place purposely in order not to be able to rush through these types of projects. There's testing that has to be done. There's, there's water testing that has to be done, yield testing that has to be done. You have to look at what it does to the aquifer for drawdown. There's, there's a lot of different things that you have to do before you can just throw and flip a switch and, and, and put a well on. So we've done a lot of those things and we're getting to the point now where submitting that to the DOH will be the next step and the Department of Health will take the time they need to make comments. We're gonna to have to respond to those comments back and in order to address any comments they have. And that's an iterative process that's gonna go back and forth a couple of times. So what we need to do is continue to go down the path we're going down. Um, I commend the water department. We've worked together with the mid H2M, with our hydrogeologists, with doing all these reports and kind of know it. we have a path to go down now where we didn't have a path before. So we got the path, we're working on the path, we're, we're headed down that path. I just ask you your patience with us for a little while longer because we do not have the ability, we don't have the supply right now that we need to continue to do any development at this point. So, you know, we really need this moratorium going forward. And that's, you know, where my thoughts are on the whole subject. 
Thank you, Trustee Graziano. Do any other board members wish to speak on this before I proceed forward? Okay, um, at this time, we've put a list of exemptions together. We understand that this is, for many people, it's, it's an inconvenience. It's more than an inconvenience, and we understand that. Uh, but at this point, we need to work together to move everything forward, us forward. And this, this pause that we've now going to vote to extend is necessary for us to move this community forward. It's, uh, it's not much more I can add to that at this point. So I, I appreciate our residents' patience with this. I don't want anybody to feel like this is being directed at any particular group of people or individuals at all. This is really, uh, we've tried to be as transparent as possible with this process. I think we have, we've done our due diligence. This is kind of the hand we were dealt and this is the way we feel we need to move forward with it. So uh, I wanna thank our consultants on this. Uh, it's only no, uh, Attorney Norton, if you could read the resolution that we are gonna to add to this or do we need to first adopt the extension and then read the resolution afterwards? Yeah, I think the first step um, to conclude this part of the moratorium would be a motion to extend the okay. moratorium for six months. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion in a second to extend the moratorium enacted by the adoption of Local Law 9 of 2021 for six months, which will cause it to expire on July 31st of 2022. I'll make that motion. All right, do I have a second? Trustee Graziano with the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Trustee Forelli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Moving on to the, the resolution. So, <laughs> Attorney Norton, Chris, you're. No, somebody's flying. No, it was, that was my fire chief, Mr. Burke. Okay. Attorney Norton, can you read the resolution? And then we'll mm -hmm. vote on that also. Yes, so this is a resolution that is amending the promulgated regulations relative to the hardship waiver process adopted in accordance with local law number nine of 2021, instituting a moratorium on certain permits, certificates of occupancy and approvals. Um, I'll read the whereas provisions just because it's short. Uh, whereas the village of Woodbury adopted local law nine of 2021 entitled a local law instituting a moratorium on certain permits, certificates of occupancy and approvals, the moratorium, after having received reports that the village's water supply is at a critical juncture. And whereas the purpose of the moratorium is to protect the public health, safety and welfare of the residents of the village and to maintain the status quo of residential and non-residential development in the village. And whereas on December 23rd, 2021, the Board of Trustees adopted a resolution promulgating regulations establishing a hardship waiver process to the moratorium. And whereas the Board of Trustees finds it necessary to further amend those regulations to account for those properties that have existing water hookups to a municipal water system that were in existence on the date that the moratorium was enacted. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the village of Woodbury Board of Trustees hereby determines that the waiver process is hereby amended as follows. So if you recall, there was a waiver process and now this is number letter E, exemptions. Should any owner of property affected by local law number nine of 2021, the moratorium, have had in place a municipal water connection, i.e. to the villages of Harriman or Curious Joel or a private well for use as potable water, at the time of the enactment of the moratorium, said property owner shall be permitted to provide such proof to the building department, water department, and village clerk, which may be referred to the village engineer. Upon a determination that the information provided is accurate and no changes in use are proposed to the property that may increase the usage of water, said property shall be eligible for a hardship waiver, the fee for which may be waived by the board of trustees. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. Any questions from the, uh, the board of trustees for our attorney? Okay. Hearing none, uh, I would accept a motion. I will ask for a motion in a second to adopt uh, this resolution as read. I'll make the motion. All right. Trustee Burek with the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. 
Seconded by Trustee Graziano. All those in favor, please. Aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? So be it. All righty. That is it. That is it on that. Okay, moving right along. Moving right along. Okay, appointment. So I need a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Elizabeth Zumas to the position of billing control clerk with a start date of February 1st, 2022 and an hourly rate of 2159. I'll do make it. the motion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do I have a second? Second. All right. Seconded by Trustee Burek. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nope. All right. So be it. Welcome to the village of Woodbury, Beth Zumas. Okay. Closing of various escrow accounts. So I need a motion in exact and a second to approve the closing of the following escrow accounts as listed for applications that have been completed with or withdrawn before the planning or zoning board of appeals as recommended by the building department. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, all right, I have a motion from trustee Ferrelli and I have a second from trustee Gomez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, moving right along. I need a motion in a, se a second for a to accept the membership applications of Christopher, Christopher Benson and Brandon Wasley to the Highland Mills Fire Company pending physicals. Make the motion. I'll okay. second. And I got a, a motion from Trustee Gomez and a second from Trustee Burek. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, moving right along. Appointment of CAW 3, second assistant fire chief. I need a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Brian Wallace to the position of CAW 3, second assistant fire chief effective immediately. I'll make that motion. All right, Trustee Ferrelli with the motion, Trustee Gomez with the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so carried. Moving right along. And Eureka, that finishes all village business for the night. So moving right along to public comment. So at this time, I will look for anyone in the public who would like to comment on any item. So anybody wish the to mayor. comment? Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Go ahead, Tom. I'm home. Good Tom, evening. what's your last name, please, first? Tom Burke. Oh, hey, how are you, sir? <laughs> there, there's a shocker. So, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome the Town of Woodbury Supervisor, uh, Mr. Tommy Burke, to our meeting this evening. I saw Tom, and I'm like, yeah, it could be anybody. So, how are you, sir? Good, very good. I, um, I have a few things. I'd like to first congratulate, um, first and foremost, Brian Wallace for Car 3. Uh, I've known him for oh, years and years and years. I, I'm sure he doesn't want me to publicly say how many years we've known each other, but uh, he's a terrific person and a, and a great, uh, great family man. And uh, as a member of Woodbury, you know, we were lucky to have him and to be recognized now as car three. Uh, I want to wish him the best of luck and congratulations. Um, that's first and the second. Uh, and I know that uh, what this board is, is going through and what they did today. And uh, I think they should be commended um, publicly um, because to make these decisions that we have to make sometimes, uh, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to do our due diligence, to reach out and grab as much information as possible we can, listen to the experts. And, um, and, and when these decisions are made, uh, like you know anything else, there are easy decisions and then there are extremely tough decisions. But uh, nevertheless, they all have to be made. And uh, this, this uh, village board tonight showed that they are very willing and capable of making these types of decisions. And um, I know once this opportunity, um, uh, we, can, we can lift it, uh, it will. But in the meantime, we, we have to be responsible to all residents and you guys are, and I wanna thank you for that. And uh, that's what I have for tonight, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, Supervisor Burke. By the way, uh, it was a pleasure uh, yesterday. The 
joint building de uh, department head meeting went so well. We had yes. everybody in attendance and I think everybody had a good time. And I think that uh, it was just nice to see everybody just mingling, I guess is the best way to put it. And it was, I thank you for, for setting things up on your end and um, village clerk Podvin, I know it was, and Clara Rivera, who also had a part in making sure that all the department heads were there. So it worked out very well for the first time that we were doing it. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's at this point in time, we've, I think we've let it be known where we're headed and the way, the way we want to proceed. And it's now time for us to get down to business. And I, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm looking for great things. So thanks again. Yep. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah. You got it. Thank you, Supervisor Burke. Uh, anybody else in the public wish to comment? Any other comments from the public? All right. All right, moving right along then. Uh, hearing no other comments from the public, I will go Wait, to the There's a hand. There's a hand. There's a hand up. A hand? Yeah, there was a hand. Jacob had a hand up. Yeah, I think it was Cloud. Yes. Jacob, where are you? I'm here. Okay, Jacob. Jacob Ferentz? Yes. How are you, sir? I'm fine, sir. And how are you, Mr. Mayor? Uh, I'm, I'm doing well. What can I do for you, sir? Um, I would like some clarification on the moratorium that was read by the attorney. And I would like to um, have some clarification because on, on, on legalized language. Okay. Uh, does that mean, do I understand correctly that there's one exemption and that is for a home that has applied before the moratorium was initially instituted, that's one. So that means you cannot apply. If I want to tear down my home and build a new one, I cannot apply. That's one. Number two, assuming that I have applied before that date when it was first initiated, if I, I can, and I can prove that I have enough water into a well or to KJ or to Harriman, and I want to rebuild a new home, which so far, so far, good. But if I want to add an additional bathroom, from what I understood, I'm restricted. Am I correct? Kelly, I, we, I know we, we just exempted any water where it's tied into municipalities or wells and whatnot, but does that apply if moving forward, if it's a new, not new? No, not if it's, there's, not if there's a new well. Um, if it's a new private well, if it's not municipal, if there's a new private well, it does not apply. Um, there's also a list of exemptions in the local law itself. However, if a person is has an existing building and is raising the entire thing to construct something new, that is not exempt from this local law. I, without without all of the details of the particulars, I, I couldn't answer and I, I wouldn't... Jacob, is this water, uh, this hypothetical, is this water that is coming from a AJ or Harriman? No, no. Someone has a home. Let's say I have a home. I want to tear it. I have a well. I want to tear it down. And I want to add two additional bathrooms. Am I allowed? No. no. Why not? Because that is subject to the moratorium as it stands. Okay. That's but there is a hardship to... waiver process in place. If you take a look at the prior resolution that was adopted by the board, Desiree, do you remember what day that was? It was in uh, December, right? It was last month, yeah. Okay, in December, there is a hardship waiver and you can make an application to the board to be exempt if you so choose. Okay, so so I'm, I, I'm not gonna waste everyone's time you know, to go into what the details of what is considered uh, a, a hardship waiver. Uh, but my basic question was, and the things, and, and it has been answered, that I cannot tear down my home and build a new one and use my own well. I'm restricted from the Bible's auditorium, in, in spite of the fact that I'm not using well, well, any water from the town. No, private okay. wells are exempted. If you have an existing private well and you can establish yeah. that you are not increasing the usage, then that would qual that could potentially qualify under the hardship exemption that was just adopted tonight. Okay. 
So you would have to take a look at that. I would suggest contacting the village clerk tomorrow to get a copy of the local law. Well, actually, they're probably available online. So the they're, local law. They're the online, law, yes. And the one tonight. And that way you can take a look and see if what you have falls into those categories. Okay. Thank you very much. You've answered my question. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else in the public? Anyone else in the public? You can even just talk at this point. All right. Hearing no other comments. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello, county legislator. Hello. How is everybody tonight? Okay. How are you doing, Lori? I am recovered fully, finally, from COVID, and so is the rest of my family. And your mother's doing okay? She's, yeah, she's finally uh, turned a, a good corner, and, and we've got her got her stable and she's doing much better. Thank you. All righty. So uh, just a, a couple of quick things. I know that you know that um, the sales tax was increased. I know it basically goes into the town. The Woodbury Village is not listed, but there will be uh, an increase in distribution to sales tax. The fourth quarter came out uh, well above predictions. So Woodbury itself will be getting another uh, $360,704.48 in payment. Uh, we just approved that uh, additional payment in Ways and Means on um, Tuesday, and it'll go to a full legislative vote on our next session on February 2nd, and will be able to be distributed after that is adopted by the full legislative body. So that is a bit of good news and a little bit of a, a perk for, for the for the residents of both the town and the village who benefit from that budget. So I just wanted to share that with you and wish everybody uh, Godspeed and a good night. Thank you. Thank you, you Laurie. That's good news. And the supervisor's on the call, so he's got more money to work with too. <laughs> so thank you. You should have already received the fourth, the fourth quarter payment should have uh, been received within the last uh, two weeks. Uh, and then this payment will go out, uh, as I said, shortly after the February 2nd meeting and it's adopted by the legislative body. Okay. Yes, uh, Angie, uh, let me just touch base with that, uh, with Lori. Yes, Lori, I, we did receive it. It was brought to my attention um, yesterday and I wanna thank you for that. And um, I'll be working with the mayor very closely with that, uh, that uh, additional uh, fund and uh, we'll be working town and village will be working together with that um, uh, very shortly. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Uh, there's a hand up there, Andrew. Larry Hartman. Larry Hartman. Larry Hartman. Go ahead. Larry. You're, on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute, Larry. All right, his hand went down. Okay. <laughs> Larry, do you wish to speak at all? All right, anyone else in the public wish to speak? All right, seeing no other hands and hearing no other voices, I will move on to department head comments. So starting with our fire chief, uh, Chris Burke, are you available? Uh, yeah, just in between calls here, <laughs> coming back from another one. Uh, yeah, no, I have, I don't have anything. Okay. I'm good. All right. All good. You got two new guys. Yeah, that's good. Uh, keep them coming. Anybody on the public, just, uh, come on down Monday nights between seven and nine, contact our recruiter and, uh, come get an application. We could use you. All right. I don't see Michael Pinella on here. He's there. He's there. Yeah. Yeah. Michael. He signed up earlier. Okay. Oh, Michael, any, any comments? Tonight? Not at this time, thank you. All righty. Mickey Phillips. I got nothing tonight, thank you. You sure? <laughs> you guys talked enough about my water department tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you got it. And as everybody knows, I'm legally obligated to mention this, uh, that uh, Rob Wyant and his guys do an amazing job. And Rob Wyant, do you have any comments as you prepare for potentially more snow this weekend? I do not. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Okay. Moving right along to uh, board member comments. So starting with uh, Trustee Graziano. Good evening. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. 
I have very few comments tonight, so I'll keep them brief um, because it's been a longer meeting. Um, the first thing is, I again, thank everybody for bearing with us as we work our way towards getting this water situation under control and, and returning to the ability to grow in the village. I think it's really important from my perspective that we are able to grow and are able to welcome new construction and new building in the village. We just need to do it responsibly and, and do it sustainably. The, you know, the, the goal of any you know, plan that we put together and we look at, especially with growth is, are we gonna have enough resources for the next generation of people who follow us when we do this? So that's what we, that's what we kind of wanna do is make this sustainable in order to have that next generation be able to share in the same success and the same growth and the same resources that we have today. So it's something that we need to have a little bit more patience with, but we are working. We've done a tremendous, and, and, and I got to credit everybody, a tremendous amount of work in the last 18 months that probably would take several years. Otherwise, we really kind of condensed the, the process down as fast and as small as we could have done it. So I, I really thank everybody working along and we're going to continue to work and continue to provide you with the best services we could possibly provide you as a village and make sure that those services are available for our future generations. The second thing I want to say tonight also is um, I'm glad to see as I've been watching the COVID numbers starting to come down. Um, it's a great thing to see. So I'm hoping everybody stays vigilant with that and vigilant with that. I kind of village on my mind, um, vigilant with that. And, you know, we're going to be out of this soon enough. Um, I, you know, the, the down sweep of, the, of this curve has been dr as dramatic as the up sweep of the curve was. So I'm really looking forward to you know, kind of getting some normalcy back in our lives again. So I just hope everybody stays healthy and we'll, we'll beat this one as we've beaten the last three curves. So with that, I want to say everybody, thank you and good night. All right. Thank you, Trustee Graziano. Uh, Trustee Gomez. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight to our virtual meeting. I want to thank all our department heads and all our employees for all the great work they do to keep uh, Woodbury running so well and keeping us safe. We are having a bit of a cold spell, like you mentioned, yesterday and today being uh, in the single digits. Let's please remember to keep, to take care of uh, ourselves and our neighbors, especially the elderly neighbors that might be living alone. Keep an eye on them, please. Uh, please look out for one another. Again, I say the, stay safe, God bless, and have a good night. All right, thank you, Trustee Gomez. Trustee Burek. Thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for attending. I am not going to talk about water or moratoriums. <laughs> I'm going to talk about something I think is much uh, more important. Um, today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Um, it's a day that commemorates the victims of the Holocaust, which resulted in the murder of one third of the Jewish people, along with countless other minorities between the years of 1933 and 1945 uh, by Nazi Germany. Um, January 27th was chosen to commemorate the date that Auschwitz concentration camp was liberated in 1945. Uh, this is a day that is used to promote Holocaust education. Um, I believe that the world has an obligation to honor the victims, empathize with and learn from survivors, and pay tribute to those who fought in World War II to bring this genocide to an end. I think today more than ever, it's important to carry on the lessons learned from the Holocaust, being that fewer and fewer survivors remain. It is important for all to accurately educate ourselves about what happened during that time and push back on any attempts to ignore, deny, or distort history. The UN designates each Remembrance Day with a guiding theme. This year's theme is memory, dignity, and justice. This theme aims to encourage action to challenge hatred, strengthen solidarity and champion compassion. I encourage all um, who are watching tonight to read some sort of firsthand accounts from interviews of those conducted from, with survivors as a way to honor all those who perished on this day um, and to keep the memories of the victims alive. Thank you all um, and stay safe and be well. Thank you, Trustee Burek. Uh, Trustee Forelli. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Again, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, I had the opportunity yesterday to attend the joint town and village meeting uh, with, the, with both the boards and the department heads. And I want to say I thought it was a fantastic meeting. Um, it was very casual. There were a lot of ideas discussed, um, a lot of things tossed around. Um, in my opinion, it seems like there was a blurring of the lines a little bit. 
a lot of people were agreeing to, to work together and help each other. Um, I just think it's, um, I just think that it, it's good, a good way to move forward. I think you can see some of the stuff that we discussed yesterday probably be rolling out in the, in the next coming weeks. And I'm just excited to see where this is going to take us. I think there's a lot of good things on the horizon for Woodbury. So I want to thank uh, Supervisor Burke and Mayor Giacomazza and Desiree and, and her staff for putting the whole thing together because I thought it was a great idea. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Trustee Farelli. Uh, before I go into my board comments, uh, anything, I'll go to Village Clerk Desiree Potvin first. Yeah, I just want to uh, urge people, since we're talking about volunteers, uh, there is a position that is solely, sorely understaffed and also not thought about, and that is the position of an election inspector. Uh, the county every year is required to hire a certain number of individuals to work out on a polling site during an election day, whether it be primary, general, or a special election. And it's a long day. It's from like five o'clock in the morning to like 10 o'clock at night. And it's, it's, it's paid about $250, $300, which I know sounds horrible, but it's a civic duty. And without those people, your election cannot be run properly. Um, or efficiently. So if 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 you're doing nothing on election day, which I hear there's an effort to make it a federal holiday, so maybe we'll all be off and and not having to work on November, whatever day it is, and the first Tuesday, November, think about volunteering to serve as an election inspector because without those people, like I said, the elections would be awful. So county's always looking. I'll have information um, in my office, and I believe it'll be in a future newsletter that I'm sure the mayor will be talking about momentarily. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Village Clerk Potvin. Uh, Kelly Norton, Attorney Kelly Norton, do you have anything you wish to add tonight? I do not. I think I've spoken up tonight, so thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, uh, echoing what uh, Trustee Burek talked about, J January 27 marks the International Day of Commemoration in memory of the victims of the Holocaust. Uh, on January 27, 1945, Soviet troops liberated the biggest Nazi concentration camp where over a million men, women, and children were executed, Auschwitz, Birkenau, in Poland. This day is not only a day to remember the victims of the Holocaust, it's also a day to ensure that atrocities like this never happen again. That responsibility lies with each and every one of us to make that generations, that make sure that generations that follow never forget and never again. Um, and another item, I, I would like to just request that everybody, the, Woodbury, as you know, is made up of a lot of active duty and or retired police officers. And this past week, two young men um, seemingly on a call went into an apartment, you know, were just doing their jobs and their lives were ended that evening. Uh, I've never been a New York City police officer. I don't know what it's like to, to answer the call for that. And these young men and women do it day in and day out. And uh, sometimes they are just not given the due they deserve. So I just hope, I just want everyone to keep those first responders in your thoughts and prayers as they go about their, their duties, their work. It's not an easy task they have in front of them. But once again, they do that to protect us, to protect our residents, our people. So just keep them in your thoughts. Uh, in the meantime, as Village Clerk Potman mentioned, uh, we are putting together with the town of Woodbury, with the village of Woodbury, are putting together a newsletter that will go out through our parks department. It is a joint project of both the village and the town to make sure that our residents are notified about everything. This will be a monthly newsletter. I, I think this was Supervisor Burke's idea. Uh, Trustee Farelli is gonna help him. He's got his uh, one of his clerks there, Clara Rivera, that is working on it and it looks great so far and it will evolve. So if we don't have your email, you can go to the town of Woodbury uh, website, and we'll probably try to get it up on our website for you to sign up for it. 
it's well worth it. Hopefully, hopefully people will know more about what's going on in public hearings and whatnot on our end that they can participate. So that's all I have for this evening. With nothing else, I will ask for a motion in a second to adjourn this meeting. I got from Jesus Gomez and okay. Trustee Burek, a motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, I don't think so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you on February 8th. Once again, we will be meeting virtually. Is it February 8th? No. February 10th, February 10th. Though some of you, you know what? Vic, you come on the 8th. The rest of us will be here on the 10th. So uh, anyway, join us on February 10th. It'll be our last meeting unless the governor extends her executive order, but it'll be virtual. We'll see you then. Thank you for all joining us this evening. Ha uh, have a nice weekend and good night. That's it. Bye, everybody. Good night.